This quack hasn't gotten anything more for us to learn right now. This fountain probably looked nicer when it was working, but right now it's just a breeding ground for mosquitoes. With her vast sums of wealth, Madame Dupre could probably feed a starving family for the next 30 years. Instead, she uses the money to keep her hedges trimmed. I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. I found this bottle of pills upstairs. Are they yours? Yes, I take those from time to time when I'm feeling tired. You seem to be out. Hmm, yes, that is a pity. <laughs> Where do you usually acquire them? Oh, they're available by mail order only. I'll have to remember to request some later. Thanks for your time. No, thank you for yours. So long, Bertie. Rock! Bye bye! Dupre looks. Stick around. I may have more questions for you later. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Gad, is this someone's room or a jungle? Quite a fascinating array of plants in here. Not to mention the machinery on the table. Seems like Juliet is very interested in getting extra credit. Now, this is interesting. Just a bunch of technical nonsense. I can't understand a word of it. Etheric pressure. What a bunch of nonsense. Oh, would you look at that. I have no idea. Well now, this is it. Well now. This plant makes miles... Those are the most vibrant flowers we've seen in a while. Yes, they certainly do. It's a good thing you're the one with the nose. I wonder what sort of fertile... That's quite the book collection. It almost puts Adelaide's to shame. All impeccably cataloged and organized as well, which makes the two missing volumes stand out even more. I'm guessing they're probably... Those are the most vi- Yes, this- It's a good thing you're the- Ah, St. Dennis Cemetery. Best view in the city. It's just a shame none of the residents can enjoy it. 
I think I'm buried around here somewhere. What are the old gravestones doing these days? I don't know him. Must be a recent addition to the force. Well, at least he won't recognize you. Nice view of the river. Good day to you, officer. Good day, sir. How may I be of assistance? Would you mind letting me in the tomb, please? Afraid I can't do that, sir. This tomb is currently part of a police investigation and ain't available for visits until further notice. I'll just keep moving along. Have a nice day, sir. Quite the assortment of pl Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. Do you know anything about ethericity, Miss Montgomery? You surprised me, Mr. Fordham. I had no idea someone of your profession would know or care about something like that. I've found that it pays to be open-minded. To answer your question, yes, I am familiar with the theory of ethericity. In fact, it's recently become a focus of my studies. Despite what the newspapers have been reporting, it's already possible to access it in small quantities from the air around us. Have you conducted any experiments? No. My research has been purely theoretical. I don't have the means to do anything practical, I'm afraid. Deceiver, dissembler, her trousers are alight. I can't understand why Juliet might not want to make her research public, though. What can you tell me about your brother? Andrew, Mama's precious little boy. If you've met him, you pretty much know all you need to. He's had the whole world handed to him on a silver platter. But he's in for a rude awakening someday. Mother can only provide for him for so long. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. Nothing else to ask him right now. Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. Miss Montgomery, please don't lie to me. I know you've been conducting experiments with ethericity. I've seen the room you're renting on Forest Lane. What? But how? I wouldn't be very good at my job if I didn't find things out, Miss Montgomery. Now please, drop the act and tell me about your experiments. Fine. I've been researching etheric effects on living organisms. I'm planning on presenting my discoveries to the board once I make more progress. So far, I've managed to discover that plant growth is accelerated significantly. It's given me quite the advantage in class. But isn't that cheating? You have no idea how difficult it's been for me to be taken seriously, Mr. Fordham. No matter how hard I tried, my work wasn't valued on its own merits by my peers or professors. I fought hard to get where I am. I wasn't about to lose all that just because some pig-headed idiots didn't think my best was good enough. That sounds awfully familiar. What about your notes on the effects of ethericity on animals? Oh, those aren't complete. I haven't tested the effects on anything larger than flies. Those experiments were mainly to satisfy my curiosity, but they have little to do with my actual research. Curiosity? Seems like a lot of effort to go to just to answer a question. But then, I never really understood these scientific types. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do.
asleep at a car. He and his friend are. He's missing his. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? Madame Dupre's son isn't being very helpful. Is he refusing to talk? More like incapable. The family doctor has him pretty well drugged to the gills. I need to find some way to perk him up. Well, you know, we are in a coffee house. I have a feeling it will take something a touch more powerful than coffee. I seem to have hit a roadblock. There's an officer posted at Dupre's family tomb, and he won't let me in. Makes sense. Who's the officer? I've never seen him before. He's young, has a small scar over his left eye, and a distinct Dixie accent. Ah yes, that would be Officer Grant. He's only been with the department for about two months. I don't know a lot about him, but he's already got the reputation for being the type of policeman who'd go out of his way to help old ladies cross the street. Typical southern gentleman, it seems. Perhaps you can use that to your advantage? That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd be- If only that police- Good day to you, officer. Afraid I ain't got time for idle chat, sir. Please, move along. Good day to you, officer. Afraid I ain't got time for idle chat, sir. Please, move along. If only that police- Looks like people have left markings and offerings in front of this tomb. You may think it's a silly superstition, but I wish you'd leave a bottle of Bowlingworth at my grave every now and then. Looks like people. You may. This quack hasn't. As amusing as it
the science of form it looks as though this full I hope remembering what page they were on wasn't... Looks like it's a letter for Andrew. As amusing as it is, this quack has. I'm here. Good to see you've made it back in one piece. So what's this big case Upton's got you on? Another missing pet? If only. A Gascon Grand Dame was attacked and almost interred alive. You mean Madame Dupre? The one whose obituary was in the paper? The very same. Goodness, that does sound serious. Tell me if there's anything I can do to help. I know you haven't been feeling your best lately. You're always a help to me, Addie. Though I assure you I have this well in hand. I certainly hope so. Addie? Yes, dear? Do you know anything about Madame Dupre? I've read that the Dupres are one of the few wealthy families that exclusively employ real people to serve. Rather commendable, don't you think? Yes. It makes it even more baffling why she was attacked. Have you heard any gossip from your clients? Anything about who might have wanted to harm her? Nothing. She's held in the highest regard by the other Grand Dames. If she had actually died, I'd have expected them to petition her canonization. I've still got that song you sang last week at the Rutherford stuck in my head. You were amazing. Thank you, Miles. That was a lovely evening. I always enjoy it when Joseph brings out his violin and we can relive the old days. Certainly nicer than when he spends hours telling the exact same story. They were very glad to see you, you know. It's probably the most fun I've had in months, to be honest. They've invited us for dinner again in a couple of weeks, if you're feeling up to it. I... I hope I am. What's that you're reading? It's a collection of short stories by James Penstroke. It was just published earlier this month. Any good? Oh yes, I love his work. He's been publishing a new serial in Brentwell magazine. I can't wait to read it. Perhaps we both can together? I think you'd enjoy him. Lately, I haven't been able to concentrate on a page for more than five minutes without nodding off. Hmm, that is a pity. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. What is it? There's an officer posted in front of Madame Dupre's family tomb, and I need to get a look inside. Could you use your wiles and charm to distract him? My wiles and charm, hmm? Well, you are irresistible, darling. I'm sure he wouldn't turn away a lady in need. Say you've gotten lost in the cemetery and ask him to show you the way out. Should we really be tricking a police officer like that? There's no harm in it, and I won't be but a moment inside. It's in a good cause. All right, let's go then. Excuse me, officer. I was wondering if you could help me? 
Hmm? What do you want? I seem to have gotten all turned around. Do you have any idea how to get to the front gate? My suggestion would be to turn around and head back the way you came. Yes, I've tried that, but I seem to just be going in circles. Perhaps you could point me in the right direction? Stop right there. That's quite enough from you. I beg your pardon? Don't think I can't tell what your game is. You're trying to lure me away from here and into some alley where your gang of Sambos is gonna rob me blind. Exactly how many of them have you got lying in wait for poor unsuspecting fools you bring them? Just one. And he doesn't appreciate you talking to his wife that way. You know, Miles, sometimes I forget how absolutely delightful it is to watch you lose your head. Miles, was that really necessary? I'm sorry, Addy. You know how I get with people whose minds are full of that rubbish. Let's just get him out of sight before this lands both of us in jail. That bush over there should work. I have to say, I wasn't expecting assaulting a policeman to be on today's activity list. It'll be fine. When you're on the force as long as I was, you can pretty much get away with murder. Although I think you may have already used up that privilege. Well, it's been fun, but I need to take my wiles and charm over to my appointment with Mrs. Lefebvre. I'll see you at home later, dear. Try to stay out of trouble. What a dramatic... Hang on. You don't suppose this is... Surprise, surprise! A hidden compartment with a stash of pills inside. Seems Mr. Montgomery has a little business on the side. I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. You'll never believe what I found in your family's tomb. Oh? Was it a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was these vigor pills. You wouldn't happen to know how they got there, would you? I see you really are good at your job, aren't you, Mr. Fordham? Look, Andrew, I'm in no mood for games. Just be quiet and take one of these pills. Mm, I suppose one would help. Thank you. My goodness, I always forget how fast those pills work. My heart is racing. You said you had questions, didn't you? Well, go on, ask them already. We mustn't waste any more time. Well, that seems to have done the trick. I just hope we haven't doomed him to a heart attack. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? I can't believe anyone would be so cruel as to do what that wretched bastard Martin did to her. Mother is kind and generous and everyone loves her. She's even good enough to hire actual people to do the housework. Not many wealthy families do that, you know. They just use automated machines or hire servants to operate the manual ones. What can you tell me about your sister, Juliet? Ah, uh, Juliet, smart as a whip and just as forgiving. She's a fighter, that one. Despite being the only woman in her class, she's managed to rank at the top. Impressive. 
I only wish mother was more accepting of Juliet going to university. But you don't want to hear about boring family matters, I'm sure. Oh, but family matters are my favorite. It's always so reassuring to know how much worse off everyone else is. That's a rather exotic bird you've got. Yes, Ray is nice when he's quiet. But get him started and it's tough to shut him up. Who trained him? I think he already knew some phrases when Mother bought him. She's managed to teach him a few new ones, though. How do you typically spend your days, Mr. Montgomery? What are your interests? I study pharmacology at the university. I'll be graduating next year if all goes well. I just hope Mother has recovered enough by then to understand what's going on. She and Jean were so proud of me when I started university. I'd be so disappointed if she couldn't see me finish. I take it Jean is your stepfather. He is. Mother married him five years after my father died of consumption. My condolences. Do you have a good relationship with him? Not terribly. Truth is, I hardly ever see him. In fact, before the funeral, I hadn't seen him at all this month. Where is he now? I don't know for certain, but it seems likely he's at his hunting cabin. His hunting cabin? Yes, he often goes there. It's his way of leaving polite society behind and spending time with his thoughts. Considering what Mother just went through, well, I would guess that's where he's gone. Although, to be honest, I don't know why he's not here with Mother in her time of need. Why do people run away from their problems instead of facing them? Why, Miles? Do you know where this cabin is? Afraid not. I don't share his passions, so I never cared much to accompany him on his outings. What exactly were the circumstances leading up to your mother's supposed death? A few days ago, I arrived home from school and found her collapsed on the floor. She wasn't breathing, so I immediately contacted Dr. Fellows. He examined her and pronounced her dead. We were all completely shocked. I was devastated. She'd been in fine health. In fact, she'd just been out riding that morning. You can imagine our surprise at the funeral when she sprang back to life. How is it you know Albert Martin? He works at the greenhouse where my sister Julia does her research. The two of them were involved romantically, and Mother didn't like that at all. I heard their fights. They were ghastly. What exactly made you suspect he was the one responsible for what happened to your mother? Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? His mother's a notorious voodoo witch. Those people do all sorts of awful things to our kind. It's all out of spite, you know. He knew Mother disapproved of his relationship with Juliet, so he plotted to get rid of her. What's your relationship with the servants like? <laughs> relationship? I don't have one with them. They're servants. Mother always made it clear that they weren't part of the family. Just help. We've only got two on staff right now, though. The kitchen girl and the gardener. So, you're running some kind of pill business on the side? Uh, I'm providing a service, Mr. Fordham. Not everyone in this life is as lucky as I am. People pay top crown for luxuries like airship tickets and social club memberships. Medicine should be affordable to all. Dr. Tennyson has a patent on the energy pill formula and thus a monopoly on the market. That means he can charge whatever he wants. Students use these kinds of pills all the time, you know. Academic rigors can be overwhelming, and concentrating can be difficult without help sometimes. I've got the skills and the equipment. If I can replicate the formula, help my fellow students, and sell them at a much more reasonable price, why shouldn't I? There's the fact that what you're doing is illegal. Oh, you're starting to sound just like mother. And just because it's illegal doesn't mean it's immoral. I can think of plenty of examples where the opposite is true. You're probably the most altruistic person I've met all month. The sad part is it's true. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Looks like the type of spice is... Certainly no sh... Certainly no shortage...
Looks like... Amelie? Yes? Anything you can tell me about John? I hardly ever see him. Only at dinner. He's scared of Madame, and so he finds any reason to get out of the house and stay away as long as he can. Scared of her? Oh, it's true. You should see him when they're in private. Like a shamed puppy that dirtied the carpet. Interesting. Do you have any idea why Jean is so afraid of Madame Dupre? If he's seen the same things we have, then yes. What kind of things? No, I spoke out of turn. Forget I said anything. Amelie, listen to me. A potentially innocent man's life is on the line. If I don't find out who attacked Madame Dupre, he's as good as dead. So if there are any facts or details you know that I don't, you, you need to tell me. I, I can't. You can. I'm not with the police. If Madame Dupre did something wrong, I'm not going to look the other way. Trust me, I'm on your side. Madam beats the servants. I, I think she even does it for fun. I hear the screams sometimes. I don't know how anyone else in the family doesn't. Maybe they do and just ignore it, I don't know. But if Mr. Dupre knows what she do, it explains why he's so scared of her. Did Madame Dupre ever abuse you? No, I was lucky, but some of the others weren't. Like who? I need details, Amelie. The old gardener, Guy Dumas, and one of the maids, Celine. I saw Madame going after them the most. Don't know what they did to deserve it, but I would see her walk by in a rage, whip in one hand and a book in the other. A book? What book? Oh, I don't know. I, I can't read, so I don't know what it said on the cover. But it's the same color as the stew spice I always use. Don't know what she used it for, but she always had it with her, just before a beating. Maybe she'd recite them some of her terrible poetry. I'm sure that was torture enough. Tell me more about Guy and Celine. They were deeply in love with each other. I used to hear them talk about how they wanted to run away together. What happened to them? I, I don't know. One day they were here, and then one day they weren't. Do you think Madame Dupre may have done something to them? I couldn't say for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if she had. Please, let's not talk about this anymore. Thank you, Amelie. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now please, let me get back to work. Looks like the type of spices you'd use... Judging by the amount of... Looks like... Judging by the amount of... Certainly no sh... Probably want a cracker? No thanks! Pieces of eight? Bye, matey! Rock. So long, birdie. Rock. Bye bye! Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please, be my guest. Tell me what you know about Jean Dupre. I'd rather not speak of him. Madame Dupre does not need to be agitated any further. I take it you don't look very favorably upon him, then. I'll just say this. If my wife had been attacked and left for dead, you can be sure I wouldn't leave her side. What a gentleman. He doesn't even leave women who aren't his wife. I see what you mean. Do you know where I might find him? I only wish I did. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately.
Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. Is there anything you can tell me about your stepfather, Jean? He's a kind man. I don't really see him too often. He seemed rather upset at Mother's funeral, but I can't help but wonder if he feels the same way as I do about her death. What do you mean? Just that I get the distinct impression that he and Mother's marriage isn't as perfect as they'd like it to appear. Uh, I'm starting to sense a trend here. Your brother told me that Jean enjoys hunting. Do you know where his cabin is? Yes, it's in Fenton Swamp. I went out there with him a few times, but I didn't really enjoy it. Frankly, the place is rather grotesque. All those stuffed trophies staring at you with their cold, dead eyes. Plants are much nicer to have around. Anyway, if you take the main road through the swamp, about a mile and a half, you'll come upon a small dirt path that goes northeast. Take that until you see a small cabin on the left. That's it. Thank you for the information, Miss Montgomery. Do you know Guy Dumas? Yes, he was one of our servants. He used to enjoy reading my books, as well as Andrew's. When did you see him last? Just last week. He came by to see me and asked to borrow some books. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Not really. I get the impression that he moves around frequently. But I can tell him you're looking for him next time I see him, if you like. Please do. Although hopefully I'll be able to find him before then. Were you friends with Celine, the maid? Yes, I was quite fond of Celine. She was so sweet and interesting to talk to. One day, she just left the house with no explanation. Mother said it was because she had found work elsewhere. I was terribly saddened. I wish I'd had the chance to say goodbye to her, at least. What's your interest in her? Oh, I was just curious, that's all. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. Hello? Is anyone here? Strange of Dupre to leave the door unlocked. Maybe it means he'll be returning soon. Satchels, boxes, and other... Let's see if Jean has anything interesting. Not very much, except a letter. the guns is missing. Jean must be out using it currently. Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my cabin? Jean Dupre, I presume? Yes, that's right. Who are you? Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the attempted murder of your wife. Oh yes, yes, of course. Forgive my rudeness, but you startled me. <laughs> Perfectly understandable, Mr. Dupre. This is a man whose bark is most definitely worse than his bite. Can we talk, Mr. Dupre? I suppose so, yes. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? Oh, my dear wife, the past few days have been just awful for all of us. Yes, I can imagine. How long have you been married? For seven wonderful years. Laura and I are just as much in love now as we were on the day we married. Lloyd, does he actually expect anyone to believe that nonsense? You'll pardon me for being so frank, Mr. Dupre, but why are you out hunting and not at your wife's side? Excuse me? Who are you to lecture me on my marriage? A fellow married man, that's who. Your wife has just suffered a very traumatic ordeal. Shouldn't you be at home caring for her? 
but we saw the confusion at the house with the police investigating and her being attended to by her doctor. I just needed to get away for a bit. Surely you can understand, Mr. Fordham. There's something off about this guy, Miles. He's definitely hiding something. And for once, I don't think it's from his wife. Do you know anything about the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's death? Horrible. Simply horrible. Do you have any idea why Mr. Martin might have attempted to kill her? Mr. Martin? You mean the boy they arrested? Andrew said it's because Martin and his mother are witches who prey on the well-to-do. You only need to take one look at him to see his trouble. It's a shame they put him away so quickly. I'd have liked to teach him a lesson or two, believe you me. Yeah, right. A lesson on how to cower in the corner, most likely. What can you tell me about your stepchildren? Ah, uh, Andrew and Juliet? I see a bright future ahead for both of them. What's your relationship with them like? It's fine. Why do you ask? I got the distinct impression from both of them that they hardly ever see you. Well, yes, I suppose that is true. We don't spend much time together, but they're both so busy with school. I don't want to get in their way. Not to mention my job keeps me away from home for considerable periods of time. Excuses, excuses. I get the feeling Mr. Dupre avoids his family on purpose, but why? Do you fear your wife, Mr. Dupre? Do I... what? The question's quite simple. Are you afraid of Madame Dupre? Why in the easy would you think that? Your kitchen maid, Amelie, told me you were. And you believed her? Really, Mr. Fordham, servants are good for one thing only, and that's their jobs. Providing information does not fall under that umbrella. I suppose it goes without saying that you enjoy hunting, Mr. Dupre? Yes, I do. I consider myself something of an outdoorsman, you see. It's nice to be able to go out and get some fresh air after being sat at the bank all day. What about your home life? Truth be told, I'm not at home as often as I'd like to be. I've been trying to make more time, but something usually comes up. Business is business, after all. Yeah, but what business are we talking about here exactly? Tell me what you know about Guy Dumas and Celine. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. They were former servants of yours. Do you not remember them? Oh, I remember them. I just have nothing to say about them. I've met some bad liars in my day, but this guy really takes the cake. We'll get him, somehow. Do you know anything about Madame Dupre trying to get Juliet taken out of her classes at the university? Ah, yes. Laura didn't approve of her daughter's desire to further her education, so she sent a letter to the university requesting Juliet's withdrawal. I didn't approve of her trying to meddle in Juliet's affairs. If she wants to study, she should be free to do so. I wrote them a letter myself, without Laura's knowledge, telling them to disregard the previous request for withdrawal. That's very good of you. Yes, well, I dislike seeing people being told what they can and can't do by others. Yet, he seems perfectly willing to employ servants at his home. Well, I suppose we're all hypocrites in one way or another. Mr. Dupre, be honest with me. Are you afraid of your wife? Here you go again with that ridiculous question. Why would you think I fear my wife? I'll get back to you on that. I'll be going now. Au revoir, Mr. Fordham. Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. Did your mother try to get you withdrawn from the university? As a matter of fact, she did. Just another one of the many ways she tried interfering with my life. What happened, exactly? Mother wrote the university requesting that I be withdrawn. I found out about it when the enrollment office contacted me. I couldn't believe it at first. I thought it was some sort of mistake, but then they showed me the letter. I take it you were upset. More 
than upset Mr. Fordham. I was furious. I was trying to make a real life for myself. One that wasn't about dresses or debutante balls or fending off suitors. I'd been given the chance to make something of myself, and Mother was ready to bring it all crashing down, just because she didn't agree with it. But in the end, you're still here. Yes. Jean stepped in and fixed everything. He didn't have to do it, but it was very good of him. I'm afraid that was the beginning of the end of my relationship with Mother. We never really managed to fix things after that. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, if you don't 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 mind, I have work to do. Fordham, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Wait, what am I saying? Of course you are! Madame Dupre has been interfering with Juliet's studies and disapproved of her relationship with Martin, hence they're falling out. Plus, the information in Juliet's notes about ethericity, putting animals into a death-like trance, seems awfully suspicious. It's enough to establish both means and motive. That's plenty to consider her a suspect. Celine, 1823 to 1844. Taken too soon, rest ye with the angels. Hmm. You don't suppose? Nah. Douglas Chesterton, 1791 to 1840. Good riddance. Hmm. William Arthur Chesterton, 1770 to 1837. Gone but never forgotten. Sarah Chesterton, 1784 to 1812. I told you I was sick. Dale Chesterton, 1794. Jane Scott, Desmond Chester, John Patrick. This must be what was. I don't see anything in. What? Were you expecting a. No, but I was hoping for some kind of. These crypts are reserved for future generations of Chestertons to- There are only three left. Then let's hope the Chestertons aren't opposed to spending eternity cozied up to one another. I have to admit. That nest is full- Perhaps she abandoned it. Always assuming the worst, aren't you, my- Else. Celine. Hmm. Nah. Celine. Hmm. Nah. Celine. Hmm. Nah.
Oh, dear God, no. Locked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. There doesn't seem to be much else of interest among the papers. Nice look. I've never seen so many. Nice melody. I think you should call it the Cheater's Suite. Yeah, it must be a nice. I have some questions. All right. Did you know Guy Dumas? The old gardener? Sure, I knew him. We didn't talk very much. He was just a servant after all. Then he seemed like a nice man. He stopped coming around about two months ago. Too bad, really. He did a good job of keeping the gardens looking nice. The new one is all right. But he just doesn't have that special touch Guy did. Were you familiar with a servant named Celine? Yes, I believe she was one of the maids. I didn't talk to her very much. Oh, she quit not so long ago. At least I assume she did. I haven't seen her in about three months. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Stick around. I may have more questions for you later. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Stick around. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, it's Looks like the type of spices you...
Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? Jean Dupre isn't talking very much. I think he's hiding something. Well, you have a knack for making people divulge their secrets. There has to be something that'll make him talk. Perhaps I should check with those close to him. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. How are things going with you? Work is hectic as usual, and I'm spending my day off in here. But considering my home life is still a shambles, maybe this is the best place to be. I'm truly sorry about that. Don't be ridiculous. If it hadn't been for you, I'd still be chained to that philandering bastard. It hasn't been easy, but I'm much better off this way. Trust me. Anyway, work gives me something to focus on. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yes, and I'm grateful to you for getting me these case leads. I know you're taking a risk to do it. It's the least I can do. How about you? How's Adelaide? She's fine. Although things between us could be improved, if I'm being honest. The less said about it right now, the better, I think. I'm sorry to hear that. You can talk to me about it if you need to, although I'm probably not the best person to ask for relationship advice. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. Celine. Hmm. You don't. Nah. Who's it pretty? Probably one no. pieces of eight. Who's it pretty?
So long, Birdie. Can we talk? Go on. I think I'm ready to wrap this case up. Okay. Who's your prime suspect? It was Juliet Montgomery, Madame Dupre's estranged daughter. Her daughter? But why? Madame Dupre disapproved of Juliet's relationship with Mr. Martin, and also tried to have her withdrawn from university. Juliet grew to hate her, and wanted to be free of her overbearing and controlling influence. So, how did she do it? Aside from studying botany, Juliet is also interested in ethericity. She rents a room in the Chum where she conducts her experiments. Among her notes, she talks about the ability to use the power to put living things into a death-like trance. Fiendish. Nice work, Fordham. I'll pass along the information and we can make an arrest. It'll be bittersweet news for Mr. Martin, I think. And of course I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Juliet Montgomery? Yes, may I help you with something? You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Madame Laura Dupre. What? But how can that be? Come with me, Miss Montgomery. We'll need to question you at the station. Addie, I'm home. Addie? She must still be out at her hairdressing appointment. I'm glad we're alone, because I wanted to talk to you about something. Yes, Bill, I know. I told you I'm doing my best to try and find the flower shop burglar. No, for once, this isn't about him. This is about you. You want to talk about me? What about me? You can play dumb and deflect all you like with everyone else around you, but it won't work with me. I know exactly what you're thinking, and you know exactly what I'm gonna say. You wanna talk about how we did on this case? Yes, that's exactly right. Have you already forgotten the old days, Miles? Before I died, we were solving cases like nobody's business. You were one of the best detectives on the force. But ever since you started taking that soporific, your mind hasn't been as sharp as before. If you're serious about taking on more complex cases, you need to listen to Adelaide and stop taking it. It's already had a negative effect on your performance. What are you talking about? We discovered it was Juliet who was to blame. Yes, but if you were working at your full abilities, you'd have come to that conclusion much sooner. If I stop taking it, you won't let me sleep through the night. Nothing will change. Well, things would change if you found you-know-who. I thought you said we weren't going to talk about that right now. Yeah, well, I say a lot of things. An understatement, if ever there was one. Can't you just keep quiet, without me having to take something? Afraid not, old friend. That's just not who I am or how this works. If you keep me up all night, I'll go crazy. Things have been hard enough as it is. And if, God forbid, Adelaide were ever to find out about- Hello, Miles. Is there someone else here? I thought I heard you talking just now. Fantastic. The jig is up. And here I thought we were doing so well, too. No, I was just going over the case. Thinking aloud, you see. Ah, of course. How was your appointment? Mrs. Lefebvre was her usual bossy and overly picky self, but she gave me a very generous tip. That's good. So I stopped by the shop on the way home and bought a new deck of cards. Excellent. Shall we have a few rounds of écarté? I believe you demanded a rematch last time we played. Yes, that would be nice. Well, you certainly managed to dodge that bullet. I only wish I could say the same. And it says here they still don't know what caused that explosion. I guarantee you it was sabotage. 
Those redites have been causing a lot of trouble lately. Is that the group of anti-steam tech radicals? The very same. Why redites, though? They're named after some fellow named Jonathan Red, apparently the one who began the whole anti-steam movement. It's really a rather stupid name, if you ask me. And uncreative, to boot. Well, what would you call them, then? Something simple, like the Anti-Steam Society. <laughs> that almost makes him sound classy. Perhaps you'd best stick with the detecting, dearest. Your nomenclature needs a bit of work. Well, I think it's about time I get ready for bed. <sighs> All right, Miles, if you must. Let her be for now. You've got your own things to take care of. Who could that be at this time of night? Good question. But Adelaide can handle it for now. I need to take my medicine. You certainly have your priorities in order. Go on then. Get that bottle of rat piss out of your nightstand and let's get this over with. Addy can handle whoever's at. Ugh, tastes like the devil's sweat. You could just stop taking it, you know. Bill, now is not the time to. Miles, could you come back out here, please? Be right there, dearest. Who was that at the door? A late night courier. You've got a message from Upton. Hmm. It seems this case is rather urgent. She wants me to meet her as soon as possible. But didn't you just take your soporific? Are you going to be all right to go? It won't kick in for another hour or so. Should be plenty of time. All right, I'm going to bed then. Good luck, dear. Good night, Addy. Hello, Upton. I'm glad you came, Fordham. Sorry for disturbing you this late. Curious to know what's so important that it couldn't wait until morning. An infant kidnapping in Lyon. The report came in tonight just before my shift ended. The family wants to keep the investigation very low-key. They're afraid if word gets out, they'll have all sorts of ne'er-do-wells making false ransom claims. But that's why I suggested they let you investigate first. Head over to 45 Belcourt Street. That's the home of Malcolm and Miriam Harris, the parents of the kidnapped boy. Harris? As in Harris Construction Company? The very same. Owned by Malcolm's father, no less. Now you see why they wanted to keep this out of the public eye. Indeed. If they manage to get a new transatlantic airship off the ground, it'll be an aura mine. I can see why they'd make an easy target. Okay, I'm on it. I'll try and find him as soon as I possibly can. Right. Good luck on your investigation. Come see me again once you've figured things out, or if you just need to talk. I'll be here all day tomorrow as well, so feel free to stop by. Mr. Miles Fordham is here to see you, sir. Very good, Mr. Havelock. Send him up. Yes, sir. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Fordham. I'm Malcolm Harris. I'm terribly sorry to hear about what's happened, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. You were very highly recommended by Miss Upton. She said you'd be able to solve this faster and more discreetly than the police. I admit it's a rather unorthodox approach, but we're desperate. I understand. I'll do all I can to find the kidnapper and bring your son back unharmed. 
If you'd like to examine the nursery, it's just through that door to the left. I'll ask you to please try and keep quiet as I just sent my wife to bed. Her nerves are rather shot, you see. Yes, of course. 